Hey everyone, I'm Bert Oppenheim, and I'm the Vice President of Biomedical Visualization at Visible Body. Today I'm going to show you how using 3D anatomy can help you teach more effectively and help your students really get these complex ideas. Professors around the world use our apps in both lecture and lab, and they tell us that it really makes their lives easier. But before we start, I'd like to show you a few illustrations that my team created years ago. They're pretty nice, right? Informative, with great colors, nice textures, good anatomical proportions, but they're 2D, they're flat. Both represent accurate representations of the digestive tract. The first one shows the oral cavity to the end of the rectum, while the second picture illustrates the biliary tree. Let's face it, it's really difficult to tell what's in front of what in these illustrations. The spatial relationships of one organ to another is just not that clear. They are functional images that identify the parts of the system, but it doesn't really educate you on exactly where things sit in the body. This is where 3D interactive exploration comes in, using our Human Anatomy Atlas 2017 app. All of a sudden, we can see the anatomy not just from the front, like those 2D images we just looked at. We now have 360 degrees of viewing. Pretty cool, huh? This is the new way to learn anatomy. It's exciting, it's powerful, and more importantly, it's interactive, which puts the onus of learning in your students' hands. Let's take a look at the entire GI tract. First, I'm going to hide a few body systems and eventually drill down to the system that we want to focus on and really learn about. I've isolated the digestive system. If you want to do this overview with your classes, you can start with the entire alimentary canal, beginning with the oral cavity, then the pharynx, and esophagus. You may want to stop here and talk about the shape and the path the esophagus takes as well as the surrounding anatomy in relation to the esophagus. Here is another place where having the ability to see things and explore things in 3D really helps. You can show how the esophagus itself spans from the neck to your abdomen, from about the level of C5 or C6 to T11. Students will be able to see those gentle curves through its course. From the front, that slight turn to the left as it crosses the descending thoracic aorta right before it pierces the diaphragm. and the anteroposterior curve that corresponds to the curvatures of the cervical and thoracic part of the vertebral column. So there is this neat spatial relationship where the esophagus, which runs adjacent and posterior to the trachea and anterior to the vertebral column. You can't appreciate these levels of space in a 2D illustration. So now let's talk about the differences in the shapes of the esophagus and the trachea. Let's switch to one of Atlas 2017's cross sections. We're now looking at the level of T2, T3, the second and third thoracic vertebra. Here is another one of those aha moments. You can see from this first view that spatial relationship I was talking about earlier of the trachea, esophagus, and vertebral column. But also now how the trachea is an almost cylindrical tube versus the esophagus, which is a much more flattened tube. Let's continue talking about the rest of the GI tract and the alimentary canal. We left off talking about the distal end of the esophagus, which ends at what's called the cardia of the stomach. The stomach is the most dilated part of the GI tract and is considered the principal organ of the digestive system. Pausing here, you can show your students how the different directions of the muscle fibers contribute to the process of digestion. Point out the longitudinal, circular, and oblique fibers. Students will better understand the rugae which creates the distinctive longitudinal folds in the mucosal layer. By the time the food reaches the small intestine, any digested food already has been broken up and turned into liquid. While students may be more familiar with the ileum and jejunum portions of the small intestine, those never-ending loops of the small bowel, show them the duodenum. I'm going to hide the colon for now so we can see it, then zoom in for a better look. By dissecting the front surface of the duodenal wall, we can see the mucosa, submucosa, and the muscularis layers. You can have the students take note of the changing layers of anatomy within the walls of the stomach and the duodenum. We move on to the second part of the small intestine, the jejunum, and the third and longest segment, the ileum. Highlight the ileocecal valve and explain that it prevents backflow of material from the cecum of the large intestine. Fade the cecum and rotate the model to show the valve. The remaining parts of the large intestine are the ascending colon, the transverse colon, and the descending colon. 
The final S-shaped length of the large intestine is the sigmoid colon, which empties into the rectum. Okay, so let's pause there for a second, switch over to another important part of the system. The accessory organs, the outside helpers, which include the liver, the gallbladder, biliary tree, and the pancreas. To help visualize these organs, we have dissected away and faded some anatomy to give us a better view. Much of the digestion that occurs does so as mechanical digestion and chemical digestion, where acids and enzymes break down food even further than the mechanical actions. As you know, the accessory organs do not come into contact with ingested material, but play an essential role. Let's start with the liver, the producer of bile. The body needs bile to break down fats in our food for easy digestion and absorption. So while the liver makes bile, it's the gallbladder that stores and concentrates it. And you can show them how the gallbladder and liver fit perfectly together by rotating the model to show the indentation in the liver that the gallbladder inhabits. By fading the liver, we reveal the hepatic ducts. Students may be surprised how many branches there are in the biliary tree. As the chyme makes its way into the duodenum, a signal is sent to the gallbladder and it releases bile through the cystic and common bile ducts into the duodenum. Hide the stomach completely and then fade the duodenum to see how the ducts connect. Another of the helper organs is the pancreas, which not only plays a part in the digestive system, but also in the endocrine system. But that's another lesson for another time. The pancreas is divided into three regions, the head, the body, and the tail. And it produces enzymes and pancreatic juices, which drain into the main pancreatic duct and accessory pancreatic duct going to the duodenum. Fade the pancreas to see how the main pancreatic duct extends transversely through the pancreas from the tail to the head and converges with the common bile duct at the main duodenal papilla. The accessory pancreatic duct also opens into the duodenum but higher up at the minor duodenal papilla. Students can see the relationship of the liver, gallbladder, pancreas, and duodenum that contributes mostly to the chemical digestive process by way of the duct system. 3D interactivity really allows students to better understand the spatial relationships and context of these organs and systems. Much better than a flat image, wouldn't you say? This is the future of A&P education.